Richard Branson said, if you want to be successful, say yes to every opportunity that comes your way. And I've lived by this idea most of my career. But a few years ago, I decided to do the opposite and say no to every opportunity that comes my way, unless it 100% aligned with my bigger goals. And this changed my life forever. So I want to talk about what that was like and how you can implement this as well and what the outcome was. I guarantee you're going to be shocked with the outcome. I'm also going to talk to you about how to build an exit strategy. Not an exit strategy from being an artist, but an exit strategy from being overwhelmed with bad clients and no money. So that way you can make more room and more time for good clients who are willing to pay you what you're worth. So let's watch this video and see how crazy things get. I've talked about this to death, but like 2015 was a big year for me because 2014, I was saying yes to everything and it meant that I was spreading myself thin. It was getting to a point where I was deciding I've got to start firing some clients. In other words, getting my time back or else I'm spread so thin that the quality that I'm putting out is going to get lowered and lowered and lowered. Because of that, I ended up, you know, ditching a couple of jobs, found solutions so that way clients are happy, but I needed to lower the amount of stuff I had on my plate or else I would lower the quality that I was putting out, which I didn't want to do. And it was a really valuable lesson to me where 2015 I decided was going to be my year of no. And like I said, I've talked about this many times, but this meant that every job that came in, I would instantly say no to unless it 100% aligned with what I wanted. It 100% aligned with my big goals for that year. As a good example, and probably the only one that I can really remember anymore, but like uh, Eddie Murphy, his people came to me saying, um, Eddie wants to start directing and he had three different movies that he wanted to talk about. He sent me the scripts and they're like, Eddie wants you to come to his house and, and meet tomorrow. Are you interested? It always stuck with me how instant it was for me to, in my head to be like, I'm not going to do it. Like it doesn't align. I get asked actually um, over the weekend to go to Hawaii next week to supervise on set for a new Amazon show. And again, I'm like, that sounds awesome, but I'm not going to do it. Because right now I know what my, my goals are, what I got to do. And old me would be like, yeah, I'll do it. And then suddenly I'm over there trying to organize calls and trying to do all the other stuff back here, putting myself in a, in a tricky situation because I, I say yes to something that ultimately doesn't align with a bigger goal. And for you, it might be that your goal, your immediate goal is to build that premium brand that attracts premium clients rather than the cheap and nasty clients that we have in the beginning. But 2015 for me was that, you know, I'd have a lot of clients coming in, but I was saying no immediately to everybody unless it aligned with what I wanted. And I expected that it would, it would give me more time to actually focus on what I wanted instead of saying this year, I'm going to do this and then be like, oh, I just didn't have any time to work on that. I felt like this is the first time they'll actually be able to get the things that are really important to me to get ahead done. But I also thought it won't be as profitable. I'm going to be saying no to most things. So I'm going to take a huge financial hit this year. What blew me away was that I tripled my revenue. And I think that's worth really concreting here. I tripled my revenue. It wasn't like, oh, I got a, a 20K bump this year. It's literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that was an unexpected side effect of it. And it's because suddenly I'm working with people on the jobs that I do take on that 100% aligned. The money was right and I was willing to push back on it because I was already a no in the beginning unless, you know, everything was right. And so suddenly I'm, I'm willing to actually stand up for myself. Whereas before I might be like, oh, well, I got to take what's immediately available. So that was really important was suddenly getting more money because I could actually ask for what I'm worth. But it also meant that I was available for the projects that did interest me and did pay really well when they popped up. In the past, like Matrix, uh, Lord of the Rings, a lot of uh, projects I wanted to do, they'd pop up and I'm like, I literally just signed a contract to work on this crappy Inspector Gadget sequel or, you know, other unnamed projects. And for once, I was actually available. Instead of always being booked up, I would be available for the right projects that come along. And there were some that had FU money. In other words, eh, I'm not going to do that. And they're like, we really want you to help out. It's like, I'll do it for 20 grand, you know, and they're like, okay. And when I did the math on some of these, I was actually being paid about $1,000 an hour for the work that was being done. 
Now that's not, you know, consistent, but in this case, it was. Like there are certain projects I was earning a thousand dollars an hour because it was FU money. In other words, I already had a foot out the door saying thank you, but no thank you. And so when these projects did come up, it meant that I had the opportunity to be able to um, say what I'm worth or say what I want. And that would be the deciding point. It's like, if the money aligns, then I'll do it. So all of these things, by saying no, by pushing back, knowing I was in a position for once where I could, it allowed me to, to earn a lot more. And because of that, ultimately, um, be able to do what I want to do and work with the clients I wanted to work with. So that was a huge game changer and it's changed my whole outlook and how I do everything now, but it always came back to the year of no. In other words, I only do projects that align with where I want to be. Again, in the beginning, all of us as juniors are going to be like, well, I can't do that. And it's like, you're right. In the beginning, it's fight or flight. You're either going to give up because the industry is too hard or you're going to kill it. You're going to be working really hard, but you're going to be just getting by. But the difference is, like I said, and I'll, I'll kind of continue to say this, you need that exit strategy. In other words, okay, I'm able to defend myself. I'm able to survive right now, but what's the next step? What do I do to get to those premium rates? And that's by building that brand, positioning it around premium rates, premium clients, selectively building out client work that attracts them, scrapping all the other stuff that isn't worth showing because it's going to lower our value. All of this positions us as putting out high quality work, tracks the right clients, they pay us what we want. And eventually, when we do get bottlenecked, and we've got too many clients, we're having to turn them away. Like I said, that's where we decide instead that I'm not going to turn them away. I'm going to make them selectively turn themselves away. I'm going to raise my prices to what I'm worth. And the ones who stick with me because they see value in me, they'll stick around. Everyone else can go. And that's good because less clients, but more money gives me more freedom to do better work and make more money and have time off because now I'm starting to save money. So there's an exit strategy. I can actually have weekends again. I can have a vacation this year. If I get sick or burnt out, I can take time off. I couldn't do that before. I didn't have that option. And that's the worst feeling in the world. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Doing jobs that align, like I said, tripling my income, finding better jobs, better clients, all of this is important. It's the fear that keeps us small because we're afraid of losing jobs and the excess amount of clients coming in frees us of that because now we have nothing to lose. Another thing I'll quickly mention is that um, a lot of the time, like I said, we undervalue ourselves. And if we treat ourselves like a product, if you're selling Armani or Louis Vuitton, if they were being sold at the cost that they, they should be charged at, then people wouldn't perceive them as being high class. They wouldn't perceive them as, as being as valuable as they are. And unfortunately, that's what we do with ourselves. We put ourselves out there. Our brand is cheap. So even if we do phenomenal work, a lot of the times the clients are going to see us as being cheap. They're going to see us as having lower value. And that's more to do with its pricing psychology, but it's more to do with how we position ourselves in the market. A perfect example of this now I think about it, there's a few stories of this, but like Banksy um, one weekend in New York put out a, a lot of his work. He was selling for like 10 bucks, 150 bucks, 20 bucks. And, you know, people... Some people would buy it. A lot of it wouldn't be bought. And meanwhile, this stuff is worth millions of dollars. There's that perceived value that was such a low price. People didn't look at it as like, oh my God, that's amazing. They're like, eh, do you want to sell me two for one? Maybe then I'm interested. And same thing, there was like a, a Russian violinist, one of the best in the world, same deal, like performing at Grand Central Station. And because this person is like booked out years ahead of time, but in this case, he's performing just there like i think he made like 14 dollars or something ridiculously low so again it's that perceived value that we're putting out i think it's really important i had a, a a training product uh once that i made and i was really proud because i'd worked months day and night on this thing and i put it out and i was so happy because out of all the people who landed on the page 50 percent bought it and i was like wow i'm getting 50 percent conversion rate uh, especially in terms of statistics that's like unheard of in terms of sales but when I started speaking with some pretty big name marketing experts, they're like, dude, like raise your prices. And I'm like, I don't want to raise my prices. Then less people will buy it. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> but 
if you raise your prices, the people who do buy it, A, they'll value it more, and B, um, they're not doing it like a bargain bin thing. Like, they're they're buying it because it's it's worth it. And, you know, ultimately, a lot of people who are buying it are probably, you know, they probably would have paid three or four times more for it. And a lot of my courses I put out now, it's exactly the same thing. Like, uh, I the cost of the courses is, is fairly high, but usually it's spend a year with Alan. And everyone always says, like, dude, I would pay 10 times more for this. And it's just like, huh, that's that's really interesting. But for me, I'm, I'm trying to make it accessible to everyone. In the case of this training product, though, I ended up raising my prices three times what it was before. I think it was like a $150 product. I raised it to $450. And I was still getting a 30% conversion rate, which means I could probably still raise it higher. And so it's really interesting by tripling the cost of it, it still was consistently being bought. So it wasn't like people were getting scared away, like, oh, that's too expensive. They're like, well, that's still a, a bargain. So they'll continue to buy it. But now I've tripled my revenue or almost tripled my revenue. So again, it's just important to think of these things because this is why we do price testing, things like that too. And that's just the chance for us to be able to say like, okay, I'm going to raise my prices. Let's just see what people say. And if a customer ever gives us any kind of uh, resistance on this, then that's where we can come back and say, well, you know, I'm going to charge $5,000. And they're like, ah, oh, that's too expensive. Rather than saying F you, they're like, that's too expensive or I, I can't afford that. This is always where you can say, well, like, what are you willing to pay? And by at least having the conversation with them, some might say, well, I'm not willing to pay 5000 but I'm willing to pay 3000 I don't know if that's in your ballpark or whatever. At least then you can understand like, okay, so maybe if I got this several times, then maybe 3000 right now is the perceived value, you know, that I'm, I'm worth. Ultimately, I want to get to five, but that's where you can say, okay, well, look, let's try 3000 And if it does go outside the scope of what we're discussing, that's when we can discuss any additional costs. But I want to work with you. Let's give this a shot. At least then, opposed to $200 or $500, you're now charging 3000 instead of 5000 You're getting a better understanding of what the market's willing to pay. So doing price testing can be important. So with me tripling the, the cost of it, you know, I could still go higher. Like 30% conversion means I could probably go higher. Um, but if I was still just keeping it at the uh, $150 mark, you know, then I, you know, I wouldn't know. I, I would think I'm doing really well. And in fact, I'm, I'm losing tens of thousands of dollars because of that. The way to look at this is that by tripling your prices, you don't have to work three times as hard. If anything, you have essentially bought yourself three times the amount of time to do what you're trying to do, right? Um, and that's the really important factor here. I got a friend, he does matte painting, and I only found this out maybe a year ago, but he charges $30,000 per matte painting. And the interesting thing is that there are plenty of talented people who are comparable to him. He's very worth the money in my opinion, but there are people who maybe if you put the work in front of a few random people, they probably wouldn't be able to tell which one is necessarily better. In other words, there's comparable artists who are charging $2,000 per painting rather than $30,000. Now, what is the difference between the two is really brand and reputation, which is ultimately the same thing. And it means that this person has built their brand up where they can charge $30,000 a map painting, whereas other people who haven't built their brand, they're getting costed out at $2,000. So what do you do to blow up your rates? You've got to put in the time, but it's about building a strategy around your brand. And I think this is where most people get the stuff wrong is that what we should be doing is from scratch, building ourselves up. Like it doesn't matter if we've been in the industry for 10, 15 years, it's about saying, I wanna take what's working, but if I'm not being priced at where I should be, I wanna go back to the beginning. I wanna figure out, well, how do I reposition myself and put intent behind that in the market to be able to get what I'm worth? And ultimately, that's what we, we need to do is be able to get paid what we're worth. Knowing that some people can make a living in 30K a year, it's basically saying I'm gonna do two weeks of work a year. Or you can be working you know, almost every single month and you can make a killing from doing that. But 
figuring out what you're comfortable with living on. Like if it's $100,000, then okay, what do I got to do to make $100,000? Whatever we're doing right now, if we're not getting $100,000 a year, we need to then look at, well, what can I do to get to that number? In other words, if I were to start from scratch, because if we're looking at trajectory, how do I get to 100K? Well, it's going to take 10 years. Okay, well, if I go back to the drawing board, I take everything that I know, but I start again with a real business plan. And again, we're artists, we're like, I don't need a business plan. You need a business plan. You need to sit down and say, how do I reposition myself for premium rates? Who are the clients I wanna work with? Who are my competitors? And how do I value myself out where they understand my worth that I'm, I'm in terms of my clients, my clients understand the value that I'm delivering over my competitors that they would choose me and they would be willing to pay more than my competitors who are delivering similar results. In other words, 30K versus 2K. Another thing just to keep in mind, like I said, if in the beginning, if we're not profiting, then there is no exit strategy. We're gonna burn ourselves out. A lot of us look at money as being a bad thing. To me, money equals freedom because money takes the pressure off and allows us to actually do what we wanna do, work with the people we wanna work. If we don't have that, then we're literally just treading water. We're just trying to keep ahead above water all the time. And eventually we're spread too thin. And when that's gone on for too long, that's when we get hospitalized. That's where our back gives out. That's where our relationships fall apart. That's where we burn out. Like all the bad stuff happens and it happens very quickly. And I've been there. It's not pretty. So no money means you can't slow down. Having money means you can slow down for the first time ever. So you're destined to burn out unless you raise your prices. That's a really critical thing here. If you're still wrestling with the idea that you can't raise your rates because you'll lose customers from doing that, then it doesn't matter about all the other stuff that I want to talk to you about over the coming days. We're not going to be in that situation. So it's really important right now to get that idea that raising prices, you're going to lose customers, but we want to get rid of the cheap customers. Less high to customers is more profitable than having cheap customers who take up all of our time. So it allows you to deliver quality, attract more quality customers, and ultimately we build out our empire, we scale our business. And that's when we start hiring more artists because before we're charging lower rates, we're hiring more artists, we're the bargain bin. But if we get to a point where our brand, our reputation attracts the right kind of clients, we raise our prices, then we can start hiring additional talent. And that means that we focus on the business we focus on bringing in new business, in other words, new clients. We focus on managing our artists and we also focus on quality assurance. In other words, focusing on making sure that the quality of the work that those artists are putting out is consistent with the, the level that we put out. And beyond that, it's purely customer experience, making sure the customer's happy, they're feeling heard, they're feeling confident that we're gonna deliver on time and with expectations of what they want to see. And as long as we do that, we continue to grow, but we also continue to get repeat business. And ultimately, I think the big mistake that most of us make early in our career is we're not focused on repeat business. We're just focused on getting any business, which means that you're always having to reestablish yourself, the communication, the vocabulary that you're building. But you also need to prove yourself all over again. You also need to prove that you're worth the money that you're asking for as well. So all of these things are important. Whereas with previous clients you worked with, they know what to expect. They know how you work. You begin to build that vocabulary of, of uh, knowing what they want and vice versa. And ultimately, that's how you can start to raise your prices too because they trust you overall. So that's ultimately how you go from 50K to 500K up to a million dollars is by scaling once you get to a premium price bracket. If you do it too soon, then you become more of like an outsource vendor rather than anything else. Hopefully this makes sense, right? Hopefully you guys are getting this and this really resonates. Like I said, if we can't get these sorts of concepts really nailed, then everything about, well, how do I raise the prices? How do I do this? How do I position myself in the market? How do I go for a premium brand? None of those are gonna work because we're still saying, well, I know what to do, but I don't wanna do it because I'm afraid that someone may say no. Instead of the right people putting their hands up saying, I'm gonna leave the room because I, don't want to work with quality artists. I, I want, you know, the cheap and nasty. They'll stick on Fiverr, whereas you're moving to a different outlet that does more quality work. So again, hopefully that all makes sense.
Okay, what do you think? Thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot from this. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you like this subject and you want me to go deep on it with other content as well, feel free to leave even a simple yes to let me know, and I'll definitely follow up with as much content, as much value I can give to you as possible. I also mentioned this earlier, but right now I just released a free course on how to raise your prices as an artist, how to attract your dream clients, as well as how to do your side hustle. I've been in the industry for 25 plus years, both as an artist, as well as a manager, hiring artists and managing them, paying them, so I'm very familiar with this topic. And for me, it's a pet peeve that artists use the excuse that there's no money in art or art doesn't pay, Art's not a real career. I want to eliminate the starving artist mindset for good. So that's why I want to share with you eight hours of training, everything I know about how to price yourself and raise your rates and get what you deserve, as well as building your side hustle as well as an artist. So that way you can leverage your talents to be able to sell assets, be able to do NFTs, everything else in between. So lots to dive into. Check it out, pricingclass.com or click the link below the video. You can check it out there. Thanks again for watching. So that's it for me. By the way, it would mean the world to me if you could like and subscribe to this channel as well as share this video because I would love to keep making more content for you. I appreciate you and I look forward to continuing to serve you on your journey to success as an artist. I'm Alan McKay and thanks for watching. Finally, I wanted to put a video above here that's related specifically to this topic too that I think we can learn more about and leverage even further. So definitely check it out and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate you.